Hey, welcome back to Five Lakes Garage, and I am excited because, hey, I'm back in the woodworking shop. So, next weekend, we have a art show or craft show or whatever you want to call it over at the American Legion Post 116 in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. So, what we're going to do over there is actually have a table. I'm going to have half of it. It's going to be doing my woodwork and stuff. And the other half is going to be Reese doing all her jewelry and uh, crocheting and all that type of stuff. And we're going to see what sells. I don't know. We're going to find out. So, if you've been following along the last little bit, I've been acquiring some toolage. And I'm loving it. Uh, I got vacuum systems, I got drill presses, table saws, routers, planers, and not to mention the big beastie of a 20 inch bandsaw. Still got to put wire into that thing to get it to work properly. But what we need to do right now is actually build something so we can donate to the American Legion so they can auction it off and it's one of their fundraisers. So what I decided to do is try to have something a little bit down home, down to earth, close to the heart, and I'm actually going to make, oh, I don't know, a cutting board since that's mostly what I've been making here lately. Now, I really wanted to make it out of wood that it was harvested from the American Legion. I have a couple of options. Now, I do have some scrap stuff over here, which I can actually use. Now, this is just some regular white oak, and uh, this was actually milled down about a year and a half ago, and the moisture level is still a little bit high. It was kind of left out in the rain. Not cool. Uh, so, kind of was thinking. Now, being part of the, uh, you know, the scouts with the American Legion, and also being a member of the American Legion, uh, I'm not a veteran, don't get me wrong, I'm one of the Sal's, sons of the American Legion, and one of the things we need to do is try to help out. So what we do is go up there and actually chop up wood. All the wood and timber and stuff like that that falls, we chop it up, we um, split it, and they use it as firewood, trying to help out as much as we can. So what I need, so when I needed some uh, oak logs that was harvested from the American Legion, from the grounds, so I could make this to have some sort of sentimental value to the lucky person, whoever, whoever awarded, you know, pays for it, I grabbed firewood. So we have a bunch of firewood uh, that was over there, and some of it is, uh, well, it's been there for a while. But we're going to make this look like that. Yeah, just a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. Um, I do have the big bandsaw, but it's not working yet, so I'm just gonna use the planer, the joiner, table saw, and stuff like that, and actually get this done, done right. Well, at least I hope it'd be done right. Now, just making a cutting board is not gonna be enough. I gotta make it a little bit better. So, I went online and actually bought one of these. This is a branding iron. So, what we're gonna do is uh, actually make this thing put it all together and before we wax it and oil it and that type of stuff, sand it all down, we're going to brand it. Now all this really says is American Legion Post 116 North Carolina. That's about it. I'm just gonna heat it up and then oil it and then uh, wax it. And somebody is gonna go home with a piece of the American Legion. So what we need to do right now is actually put this away so I do not break it. And take these pieces of timber to make it look like that. I can work with that. Can't really work with this very much. It doesn't look like a cutting board. Yeah. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to the planer, crank everything up, get my vacuum going, and at least make one side flat. If we make one side flat, then we can take it to the joiner, and it'll be a lot faster to actually get side two flat. Once you get those two flat, then you hit the planer again and make it all flat. All right, that didn't take that long. I did destroy my blades, but that's okay. I'm sure you're going to comment down below on, hey, you're an idiot. You just ruined your blades. But those are old set, I just got to flip them over and we're good to go for brand new stuff. Now, a lot of the stuff came out pretty good. Uh, some of it's short, some of it's long, some of it's thick, some of it's short. We'll get it all the same size. And uh, some of them, like this one, uh, this one might be a little too far gone. As you can tell, it's a little bit, mm, it's getting a little soft. 
Uh, this side is okay, this side not so much. Maybe we'll make some pens out of that one or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we got some uh, good ones here. Uh, that one actually looks pretty darn good. Uh, it's got a couple cracking in there, but we can actually plane those out. This was the first one that I did, and it works out. It looks fantastic. Um, I do like that some of the wood is darker, some of it's lighter. It came from different trees. Like I said, I just grabbed some uh, firewood that's in there. But I'm thinking that should be plenty for one good size cutting board. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, some of it's short, some of it's long. I do have a little bit of bug holes in there. I can fill those in. Not a big deal. Yeah. All right, welcome back into the shop. Uh, it has been a few days, so I kind of milled these down the other day and checked the moisture level way too high. So what I actually did was actually go inside, don't tell my wife's stuff that I borrowed the oven. Because yeah, put these in the oven and put it about 220, 230. Uh, kind of got it up there, left it in there for an hour, turned it off, just let it slowly cool down. Um, I did that twice and now, I'm down to 7.5%. So that's sort of acceptable. Kind of wish it was a little bit lower, but I'm running out of time. And hopefully this thing does not warp too bad once it, somebody actually buys the darn thing. But I did make it out of firewood. Anyway, so what we got to do now is actually cut off some of the parts that we can't use, try to figure out exactly what we can use, and put that together and see how big this thing is going to be. Then we got to glue it and set it. And then once all that's done, tomorrow I get to come back and plane it down, make sure it's all level, and then start putting some glue and some powder in there to actually fill in some of the bug holes or chips, tips, whatever. You need to fill them up because it needs to be flat. So let's get our handy dandy slide to work. All right, got everything true. Got everything, all the bad pieces kind of cut off. I, got, I think I got enough here to work with. It's not gonna be a huge cutting board, but it'll be enough to actually hopefully make some money for the post. Now, one thing I need to do is actually figure out some sort of design. Now, if you look at these two pieces, they obviously came from two different trees. One is darker than the other. So what I'm actually gonna do just to break it up a little bit is I'm gonna cut this guy into strips. And when I do that, I'm just gonna put it in between guys yeah there you go these guys just to make an alternating type of color and hopefully somebody will like it so yeah uh, let's see I'm gonna get these guys the same length the same width so I'm just gonna take the smallest one use that as a guide set my my, uh, my fence up rip them down and I'm gonna rip these guys down into smaller strips and fit it in between that's how we're gonna do it all right so this is basically what it's going to look like uh it'll be a lot darker once i actually get all of the oils and stuff in there uh but it is made out of oak uh, i'm not a big fan of oak i have to say but it uh, has some you know has some deep down feelings if you are a member of the american legion so anyway uh everything is cut everything is ready to go now we just have to glue it together and just picture this guy being burned right there or maybe I'll do it in the corner. Hmm. Maybe I'll do a short and see what you guys think. We'll see. All right, let's get this guy glued up and prepped because once it starts to set in and glued, uh, we got nothing else to do. I got other things to do. All right, so she's all together. She is going to need at least 12 hours to dry enough for me to actually deal with it and handle it. So we're not gonna be back on this project until tomorrow, but that's okay. Cause I have other ones to keep me involved. 
I still have a bandsaw over there that I need electrical for. Hopefully by the time you see this one again, that's gonna be up and running. All right, see you in a bit. What up, dog? All right, we are back in the shop today and we're going to try to finish up, at least get really close of getting this cutting board ready for all the American Legion people. Now, I did put out a short asking for you kind and noble uh, viewers uh, where I should actually put the actual logo. Uh, some people say in the middle, but then that kind of cuts up when you're actually trying to use it, but it's good for a display. Uh, I think I might put it on the center on one side and the lower right on the other. Now I did try to just burn a little scrap piece and I think it turned out pretty good. It's not too awful bad for being a cheap one off the internet and also designing it in PowerPoint. Yep, and I'm a computer guy. Believe that one. All right, so what she looks like. Oh, I'm getting old. All right, so far so good. It's uh, still in one piece. All right, let's take off some clamps and see what we got. There you go. That should work. Nice and flattish. All right, let's clean up the space. We can start planing this thing. We got to get some of the bumps off or else it gets kind of catawampus. You know, it's got all the glue. Well, let's get that glue off. First, let me put my tools away. All right, so we got to get the glue off. And what I'm going to use is actually just a little chisel. Just don't go too hard because then you actually make a groove and that means you have to sand it out or plane it out or join it out or something. You just got to get it out. But let's get all this glue nasty stuff off so we can actually put it in the planer. All right, close enough. Let's get it over to the planer. All right, stuck it through the planer, everything is looking beautiful. If you notice, I left this one a little bit long because when you put it through the planer, you get that little groove. Hopefully most of it is on that one. Feel it right there. Now all that is gonna get cut off. I'm trying to save a little bit of waste. Um, also, some people actually, when they glue this, glue like a sacrificial piece of pine on that side. So when it goes through the planer, you don't have to sand it off as much. Uh, but this looks like we're in pretty good shape. We're just going to go ahead and true up the sides so we don't have so much to sand. And then we're going to sand it. Got to sand it. Got to make it look pretty. Uh, not only that, if you notice, it's got a lot of little dinky bug holes. Yeah, we're going to be uh, filling those in with a little bit of sawdust and a little bit of glue. But of course, you got to let it dry. But anyway, uh, here's something else too. When you get yourself a decent table saw, which I love my Delta right here, one thing you need to do is build yourself a bridge. Now, I built this one a little while ago and I actually made a video on it. If you want to look at it, check out the playlist. Uh, this thing is it, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It is essential when you're doing stuff like this. Just make sure that your fence right here, this one right here, this one is very true to your blade. Get yourself a right angle. I wouldn't use something this small, but you grab a big one. Make sure your blade is perpendicular with your fence. And then you can make cuts like this very easily. Nice and butted up. And yes, before you go ahead and comment, well, actually go ahead and comment, that's fine. Uh, yes, I know I should be wearing some safety giggles. It's far away. Uh, but anyway, so now let's uh, fill these holes up so we can actually sand it. Hmm. You know what, I'm gonna actually router it first. I'm gonna router it first, then I'm gonna fill the holes. And then we're gonna sand it. And then we're gonna spray it with some water. And then we're gonna do the whole process over again. And hopefully it's gonna be beautiful by the time we're done. 
Not too bad for a bunch of firewood. All right, we're going to go ahead and fill in some of the little little holes that are in there. You're going to get it. Like I said, it's firewood. Uh, a couple little tips, though, that I have learned along the way. Because as you know, I am still learning. Have yourself a different board or a different table, a different platform or whatever about what you're actually doing. Now, this one right here is just a piece of plywood. But this is my sanding plywood. So that it doesn't have any contaminants, it doesn't have the oil, it doesn't have the wax, it doesn't have anything on it, and definitely does not have any glue on it, so it's nice and flat. I can actually do my sanding. Not only that, it's plywood. I have some small screws I drill in there to keep the board from flying everywhere. Uh, there's some other stuff, there's some clamps, but I use screws. Uh, so, ah, excuse me. And also, when you're actually taking it through the planer, you can build yourself a little tray and as you can tell this one has a bunch of garbage on it because this one I actually use for um, oiling and waxing. Alright! Alright, I'm grab some sawdust and some glue. Alright, so what I have here is just sawdust. Uh, all I really do is go take my belt sander, this guy here, because it has a bag in it, it's full of stuff, but I take the belt sander, hit it. That means I have uh, sawdust from that particular grain. Eventually, I'm gonna have little val uh, little bottles of every grain. A little bit of walnut, some red oak, some white oak. Whatever what I'm using, I wanna have a small little thing of sawdust because you don't use a lot of it, but you create a lot. So what we're gonna do is fill these holes up. Check it out. All right, I'm gonna take my glue. I'm gonna put some in my hand. Don't need a lot because you don't have a lot of holes. But then I'm gonna grab some sawdust and fill it in. All right, the reason why you use sawdust, it's kind of like, uh, like I said before, when you go and they try to make a uh, aircraft carrier out of ice. Well, ice itself is not strong. But when you put sawdust and other stuff in it, okay, it's it very strong. So now I got a little paste. I'm just going to work it into the holes. You don't have to be shy with it. Just make sure you dig it all the way into those little holes and crevices. Don't just have it on the surface because then when you sand it, you still got a hole. All right, all my holes are filled with a little bit of glue and a little bit of sawdust. Now we're gonna let this thing dry for a few hours and that should be enough to actually get it down to where I can actually sand it. If I try to sand it right now, some of it might actually pull out. It's not dry yet. It's gonna contract a little bit. And not only that, you're gonna gum up your sanding paper. So we're just gonna let this sit over to the side and dry. And then when you come back, we're gonna be sanding and getting dust everywhere. But now we're back. All right, so uh, yeah, that looks like garbage, right? It's pretty dry. Uh, it's been quite a few hours, but we wanna get this side to look like that side. So all of the holes were actually filled up. It actually sanded off pretty decently. Um, still got a lot more sanding to do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this guy on this side. Then do the edges, and then we're gonna splash it with some water. All right, here's a tech tip for you. If you're still using one of these, oh, yeah, I've had this thing forever, like 20 some odd years. Go ahead and throw it out. I don't believe I'm gonna be ever using that thing again. Cause I got this guy. This is a orbiter sander. You don't have to worry about grains. You don't have to worry about anything. This thing is awesome. And the thing actually, uh, the bag actually catches a lot of the dust. Not all of it, but a lot of it. That's why I got the fans going. But anyway, let's get this guy sanded. Ready to go. All 
All right, she is all sanded down. Looking good, I have to say. Hopefully it does not warp. Uh, last time I checked the moisture content, we're still really good. But you never know, because this is the first time I'm actually using firewood for a cutting board. Anyway, uh, so what we need to do now is actually open up the pores. We've already sanded it down with the 120. Now we're gonna have to open up the pores. How are we gonna do that? With some water. So we are going to coat that down all angles all the way around. Now we're gonna leave this over to the side and let it dry. And what that's actually gonna do is take all the pores and kind of open it up a little bit. And then we're gonna to have to sand it again once it's actually fully dry. Because then hopefully after you wash it the first time, is not gonna like open up and be all rough. It's gonna be nice and smooth for you. But anyway, look at that. It looks pretty darn good. You can get sort of the color once you actually get it wet. But of course it dries and turns dull again until you put the oil on it and then magic happens. All right, we're back. It's been a few hours. Uh, I've already done some stuff on the lathe and our board is pretty much dry. There's a couple little moisture spots here and there, but uh, once you start sanding it, it'll dry right up not overly concerned so we're gonna grab our rusty trusty orbital sander that i just told you about which is awesome by the way uh we're gonna hit with the 120 smooth that out uh we're gonna go to 320 i mean at 220 smooth that out 320 smooth that out there's no real reason to go any higher than that especially for a cutting board um and then once we're gonna do we're gonna heat this guy up and we're gonna put a couple of different uh, brands on it see how it goes uh if I completely botch it, sand it off, try it again. But once you actually get the branding on there, everything is cool, everything is great. I'm gonna go and hit it with some oil and hopefully everything will be locked inside. Once I put the wax on, on top of the oil, once it sits overnight, it, you got the routine. You've seen this before. Let's get sanded. All right, everything is sanded down. It is ready to go. Now is the moment of truth. We need to heat something up. So I'm gonna take my little brander here. Uh, be careful with it, it is a soft metal. Uh, if you drop it, you ding it, it's not gonna look so good. But inspect it, make sure it's where you want it to be. Make sure you have it where you wanna put it. Once you push it down, you're done. Anyway, uh, I was gonna put it I was gonna put it right down here in the lower right hand corner first. And then if I like it how that goes, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna put it right dead center. In case they wanna put it on the wall or something like that. Ooh, I'm getting nervous. See how it goes. Look at that. Light sanding, kind of buff it up a little bit, kind of clean it. Oh, that's gonna look great. You know what? I might just keep it in that corner. I kind of like it. Nice. All right. One thing I did read, let your iron cool down naturally. Uh, don't throw it in water. Don't throw it in all the other stuff. I like the way that turned out. Look at that. That's awesome. Might bring it to the post and we just start branding everything. Nice. All right, let me put this away so I don't mess it up. All right, so now we're ready for some oil. That looks fantastic. I'm liking it. I'm loving it. Uh, so now we're going to put some oil on this thing. Now, one thing like I said before, change out your board. Now, I have my oiling board out here. It's already warped, it's already whatever. It does okay though. Anyway, so let's go here. So this rag here is completely soaked down with this oil. I've been using it for a little while. So, let's see what she looks like. Nice. 
Wow. That, to me, looks awesome. Got my American Legion 116 down here. I got the two different colors. Yes, I am loving it. Needs a lot more oil though. The rag's drying out. You know what, this is the one, the best part I love about doing this is when you have something like this and you just go whoosh. I feel like I'm doing infomercials. I just hope it doesn't work. Alrighty. So now you just let it sit, let it soak in. You come back tomorrow, you can give it a good Good waxing, and then you're ready to go. That is awesome. But I gotta fix my hands, that's nasty. All right, so what do you think about that? Think that somebody might pay a couple bucks for that? I hope so. Hopefully it goes like hundreds and thousands of dollars, because then that'll help out the post. So anyway, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I got other things to take care of. Then maybe I'll get some sleep. Maybe. All right, we're back up in here and it is time to put some wax on this thing. Now, the main reason why you want to put wax on there is actually seal it up. Kind of said what I, <clears throat> kind of sort of what I said before is that you don't want to have any holes in this thing because any holes, bacteria and food and stuff like that, stuff that you're cutting is actually going to get in there. Uh, what I like to use is some beeswax. Uh, this is for cutting boards. I have a special rag that I use just for beeswax. You don't need a lot. But you need enough to get yourself in the rag. You're gonna take your board here and just rub it in. You're almost like you're polishing it, really. Okay. You're gonna see how beautiful this is actually gonna turn out. Make sure you get both sides up, down, left, right, everything. The more you rub it, the better it's going to be. Ah! The only problem with the wax. Get it on your hands, it gets slippery. Anyway, there you go. Hopefully this thing will be nice enough that somebody would want to take it home and actually make the post a little bit of money. Now tomorrow is the day. So we'll be saying goodbye to this, but saying hello to a lot of new faces. So hopefully if you're going to be around, come on down. It is Saturday, November 16th uh, from 12 to 5 at American Legion, Post 116 in North Carolina, <clears throat> Fucoy Verena. Sorry, I've been talking like all day. My throat is trashed. Anyway, all right, take it easy. Have fun. Get out there and build something and build it for somebody else if you can. Get a lot of satisfaction out of it. Later.